allow him to work, he will use you. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for the encouragement you have given us through our beloved brothers. We pray, O oh Lord, that our little time together will be a blessing to them in Jesus' name. And in whatever way we can be of help to them and to Tanzania and to other countries, I pray that you help us to do everything that can be done in Jesus' name. What they have shared with us has helped us too. We pray that you will water the word they have planted in our heart. That their ministry to us will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Bless us together. Use them more for us and more use us for them. That both together in unity will harvest the ripened harvest of these last days. That in this Africa and beyond, many will be called into the kingdom. Amen. Bless us as we continue tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight uh, we're taking a brief moment and we're talking on signs, gifts, and wonders. Signs and wonders are synonymous with miracles. And these miracles, signs and wonders, they were wrought in Bible days by men who were called of God, by men who received the power of God. Bible record shows that God used prophets in the Old Testament, apostles in the New Testament, deacons, that is, people like Stephen and people like Philip in the New Testament, and believers like Ananias to open the eyes of Saul. He used leaders and workers and members to produce supernatural signs through the gifts of the Spirit. And so you find that miracles were not restricted to some specially chosen people. We are glad as we hear testimonies of the great things that God is doing. And as our brother shared the things that happened in Tanzania the last time uh, I was there. But please, don't think that all that is limited to brother so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, bishop so-and-so, evangelist so-and-so. There are really no people that are raised up only to work miracles. You will find that God sends people, he raises up people, number one, to reveal the word and the mind of God. Number two, to interpret and demand obedience to the law of God. And number three, to restore a backsliding nation. Number four, to confound and if possible to convert heathens. And then number five or six, to teach sound doctrine and call saints to holiness. And then it is to proclaim and prophesy God's revelation for until the end of time. When you then give yourself that you will reveal the word of God, you will interpret the word of God, you will restore the backsliding people, you will confound and convert the heathen, and you will call saints to holiness and teach the word of God and proclaim the revelation given by God unto men. God then gives you also the confirmation. He confirms your ministry. He confirms the word or signs following. Because of time, I'll not be able to read the references. Exodus chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. God had given Moses a ministry, a word. And he was given the miracle ministry to confirm the word he had been given. And Jesus Christ, he came with a message. And then the miracles were to confirm the message. That's John chapter 14, verses 10 and 11. 
and in uh, Mark chapter 16, look at that, Mark chapter 16, and in verse 20, it tells us how the miracles came, and they went forth and preached everywhere, that's the ministry, is a ministry of preaching and teaching, proclamation, declaration of the word. And the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. If you have the word, you should normally expect the miracles to follow. And so the miracles were granted and are still granted today to confirm the truth. Then, you understand one point here. The miracle is attached to the truth. You step into the truth. Proclaim the truth. Preach the truth. And the miracle will normally follow after your ministry. Miracles were not performed in isolation. Just to demonstrate supernatural power. It is not to satisfy the curiosity of men. In fact... Miracles are not given like toys to satisfy the curiosity of little babies. But proclaim the word and the miracles will follow after Luke chapter 23 verse 8. When Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. For he was desirous to see him of a long season. Because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracles done by him. He wanted to see Jesus perform some miracles out of curiosity. Verse 9, then he questioned him in many words, but he answered him nothing. Jesus will not perform a miracle just to satisfy curiosity but if we have the right attitude he has given us the promise then he tells us the purpose and he promises the power three points we're talking about if we have time the promise of gifts and supernatural signs first there is a gift of the holy ghost second there are gifts of the holy ghost First, there is the gift, singular, the gift of the Holy Ghost. And uh, that is used for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission, the removal, the forgiveness of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. Do you know the promise is yours tonight? And to your children, to the young people, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Therefore, he gives us the promise of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And that promise is for all flesh. It is for you. Joel tells us in Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon how many people? All flesh. The promise is yours. You are part of the all flesh. If you are thirsty, if you want to see God glorified, then he will pour that spirit upon you. And so, if you have been saved, and you prepare your heart, you take that heart back to the Lord, He purges you, purifies you, makes you holy, sanctifies you, then you have the gift. It is a gift, it's not something you earn. It's something that God bestows upon you, free of charge. But then, apart from the gift of the Holy Ghost, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, there are gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 1. In verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. He doesn't want us to be ignorant 
of the gifts of the Spirit. And he doesn't want us to be ignorant of the possibility of every believer possessing the gifts that are meant to fulfill the ministry God has committed into their hands. What are those gifts? Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. When the gift of the Spirit comes on your life, it is to profit in the ministry, to profit the kingdom of God, that the work of God will profit or will prosper in your hand, and that the people who know you in the ministry, they will know that you are profiting in the world, not financial profit, spiritual profit. You are a blessing to many people. Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. All these workers that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. You will see that the Lord has given us the promise and is faithful that promised. God has never failed in fulfilling his promises. That he made to his people. We know Satan is a liar. Don't we know that? He makes many promises. He never fulfills any. But our God is faithful and trustworthy. And the Lord has promised that he will give you his spirit. And he will. That he will energize you and empower you. And I know he will. And that it will not just be a few people manifesting the gifts of the spirit. You will join the army of effective ministers who are also manifesting that same power in Jesus' name. We have no excuse to be void of the gift and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. The promise is made unto you, and it is made unto as many as the Lord our God shall call. After all, it is not given us on the basis of marriage. On the basis of worthiness, is giving us for his service. If you are committed to the preaching of his word without compromise, he will give you the signs, the wonders, and the miracles that will follow. And I believe that the Lord will touch your life. I believe he has touched your life already. But you know something, although we don't have time, if you learn how to ride a bicycle and you never get on the bicycle and tell the person teaching you to ride a bicycle to leave you and make you ride all alone if you're always afraid i might fall you will never learn how to ride a bicycle that means then you are in a meeting like this you are hearing the promises unto you and to your children, to many that are far off as many as the Lord shall call. Now the Lord is giving you the promise. But if you never reach out, you never pray for the sick, you will never know that the gift and the promise is there and it is for you. Let's say you have learned how to ride bicycle about 20 years ago. And you rode bicycle for one week, one month, three months. But for the past 15 years now you have not been on a bicycle to ride bicycle you understand what i mean if i call you now and i say here is bicycle jump on it and ride you say i will run i won't uh, ride a bicycle for 15 years i have not been on the bicycle i don't know whether i can make it again and if you try to ride you will not ride as perfectly well as somebody who has been riding bicycle for the last 15 years. Do you understand? If God has given you 
the miracle ministry five years ago, ten years ago, some years ago. You prayed for some people at that time and they were well. And God performed those wonderful miracles. But for the last five years, seven years, eight years, although you still pray, but you pray the normal Christian prayer in counseling, in teaching people, in rounding up the message, that's prayer, but you understand it's different. If you have not been riding the bicycle for the past five years, if I came to you tonight and I say, here is a blind man, touch him and make him whole. You'll say, uh, give me such the scripture to teach, give that one to another person. The power is there, but because you are not making use of that power regularly, you may not see that it is there. What then is the counsel I'm giving? If you want to be very good and an expert in riding that bicycle, when you get back home, uh, spend time and take that bicycle and ride around and then pack it following day ride again by the time you practice that for one month every day you'll be riding bicycle with both of your hands off uh, you know the handle and you'll just be jolly riding all around and saying i'm coming i'm coming clear out of the way and everything will be all right you understand what i mean actually i'm not saying she'll go since you have a vehicle now why should you go and ride bicycle but now what I'm saying is that on this miracle ministry, get back to it. See the people that are suffering. And see the people that are lame. See the people that are blind. And begin. Search for them. Look for them. And, and uh, see the power of God in your life. As to do that by the grace of God. At every opportunity. Every week and every month. Before you do that for a long time. God will perfect the gift in your life. Now, what's the purpose? That's point number two. The purpose of the gifts and the supernatural signs. Uh, we don't have really much time, as you know, but uh, let me restrict myself to just one book in the New Testament. As we look at the purpose of the gifts, that is, these gifts either of revelation, of the word of knowledge, of the word of wisdom, of the gift of healing, of the working of miracles, of the gift of faith, of prophecy, all these gifts, let us find out, just restricting ourselves to one book of the New Testament, the purpose of the gifts and the supernatural signs. And we're looking at the gospel according to St. John. In John chapter 1, verse 45, and Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law, and in the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael, coming unto him, and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no girl. Nathanael saith unto him, Where, whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said, uh -uh, Before Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. That's the word of, the word of knowledge. Because Jesus wasn't present with him there. And this is one of the gifts of the Spirit. I saw you there under that tree. That simple word of knowledge made the unbeliever a believer. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. That's a great message. Not one hour message. Just that gift of uh, the Spirit. And Nathaniel immediately turned around and said, You are the King of Israel. You are the very Son of God. Those are gifts have purpose. Chapter 2, verse 11. This beginning of miracles that's turning water to wine, did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed in him. That's the purpose. Even the believers, they were strengthened in faith. Chapter 3, verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night, Nicodemus, and said, unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Um, Nicodemus, how did you get that conviction? For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. 
It was uh, in the mind of Nicodemus and the rest of the rabbis and the Sanhedrin. Because of those miracles, they knew that uh, the Lord was, the Father was with him. And you are a teacher come from God. Chapter 4, verse 52. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amen. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Miracle of healing. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth himself believed and his whole house. Fever had been healed instantaneously, miraculously by the power of the Lord. What was the result of that healing? Himself, he believed, his whole family, his whole house, they believed. In chapter 7, Verse 31, and many of the people believed on him when Christ, and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man has done? Some people were doubting, is he the Christ, is he not the Christ? They said, what else are we waiting for? If uh, that Christ, if this is not the Christ, when that Christ comes, will he do more miracles than this man has done? Those miracles were the credentials of the Messiah. And uh, when they saw that, immediately they believed. Chapter 9, John chapter 9, reading from verse 30. The man answered and said unto them, Why? Herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. <laughs> See this man, he was born blind. And Jesus opened his eyes. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were questioning him. What do you say about him? Oh, he said, as for me, I believe that he is a representative of God. He has come from God. He is not a sinner. He is perfectly holy. He said, I can tell you why I believe that. I have never heard that God used a sinner to open the eyes of the blind. And that was good theology from a blind man. Don't you think so? He said, I'm very convinced. The miracles had convinced him. You will see then that miracles actually have a purpose. And it is a turn on believer to become believers. John chapter 10. In John chapter 10 verse 25. And Jesus answered, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they, are be they bear witness of me. That's the purpose of the miracles. The works, those miracles, signs, and wonders, they are the things that bear witness unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 37, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. He said, once you see the miracles, you see the signs and the wonders, what else are you waiting for? Believe. If I have not done the works of my Father to fully represent the Lord in those miracles, signs and wonders, if I have not done those things, then don't believe. But in verse 38, if I do, though ye believe me not, believe the works, believe the miracles, believe the signs and wonders, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Chapter 11, verse 45. In chapter 11, verse 45, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which he did, believed on him. He had raised Lazarus from the dead. And as a result of that gift of miracle, that's beyond healing, he raised a man from the dead and then they went and they believed on him. Many, many of them, they believed. In chapter 12 from verse 9. Chapter 12 from verse 9, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And uh, they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that he might, they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Why? Because they knew that he was the point of attraction now. 
attracting and drawing people to the Lord. Because in verse 11, that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and they believed on Jesus. Chapter 14, verse 10 and verse 11. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you? I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me. Or else, if you can't believe on that basis, believe me for the very works sake. You will see then that the signs and wonders, uh, they make people to believe. And this is the purpose that they will attract the sinners to the Lord and even encourage believers to embrace the Lord and stay with the Lord. Look at uh, the second to the last chapter in John, chapter 20. Chapter 20, verse 30 and verse 31. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Looking at the uh, gospel according to St. John alone, you have seen from chapter to chapter to chapter that the purpose of uh, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders is to bring people to know the Lord. Let me summarize that section for you. Signs and wonders are, number one, to give divine approval to the minister and to the message. Jesus Christ was pointed out as a man approved of God by miracle signs and wonders. Acts chapter 2 verse 22. Number two, the miracle signs and wonders are given to confirm the word that is being preached, that the word is from God. That's Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Number three, it is to leave sinners without excuse. To leave sinners without excuse. If I have not done the works that no man has done, they would have excuse. But now they have seen, and they have both hated me and my father, and they have no cloak, they have no cover, they have no excuse for their sin. John chapter 15 verses 20 22 to 24 number four is to silence the critics and the opposers of the gospel acts chapter 6 verses 8 and 10 to silence the critics and the opposers of the gospel number five is to turn multitudes to know the lord that's acts chapter 8 verse 6 to verse 8 Philip went to Samaria. And when those people saw the demons shouting, crying, and coming out, and many people that were healed, there was much joy in the city. And the whole of the city believed on the Lord. You also find that in Acts chapter 9, verses 32 to 35. Number 6 is to judge hardened sinners. Miracles are to judge hardened sinners acts chapter 13 verses 6 to 12 paul the apostle was preaching somewhere say bad jesus good name but uh, bad character he was a sorcerer and he was uh, trying to turn the deputy away from the faith and then paul manifested the gift not only of discerning of uh, spirits but of the working of miracles and he said a child of the devil you will be blind for a season not seeing the sun. And immediately he said that blindness came upon that man and he led him away. And then the deputy believed being astonished at the doctrine that they preached. So you will see it is to judge hardened sinners and open the way for the unbelievers to believe. Number seven is to aid and strengthen faith. Miracles aid and strengthen faith. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 29. 
That woman was the issue of blood 12 years. I'd spent all that she had on physicians and was nothing better. She had of Jesus Christ and she came in the presence and said, If I may but touch uh, the tip of his uh, garment, I shall be made whole. And then she came and she touched, and the blood stayed immediately. And Jesus said, Someone has touched me. And you will see that what helped that woman, aided her faith, strengthened her faith, is that she had heard of the miracles of Jesus. When we hear of those miracles, they strengthen our faith. Number eight, it is to establish believers. Romans chapter 1 verse 11. I want to come, I desire to come to Rome that I may establish you. And it says it will be coming in the power of the Lord so as to bestow spiritual gifts unto them. Number nine, it's to evangelize heathen lands. Miracles and wonders are to evangelize heathen lands. That's in Romans chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. Number 10, it is to confirm special office and ministry. To confirm special office and and ministry. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Look at it. Second Corinthians 12, 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience. What are those signs of an apostle? Signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. And so you find that when we talk of miracles, signs, and wonders, they are purpose. And uh, if you are willing to abide by that purpose, I believe that the power of God will be operating in your life. Number three now, power to confirm gospel preaching with supernatural signs. Power to confirm gospel preaching with supernatural signs. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You know this passage, it says, And ye shall receive power, and I shall receive power. Can you say that? I will receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon me, and I, I will be a witness in my city, and to the uttermost part of the earth. I believe that if you believe that, that same power will come upon you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Well, you know, the situation we sometimes have in the Christian fold. Let me try to ask you a question. And as I ask you the question, I'm trying to get something out of you. What if, for example, in your state, if you're in Nigeria here, we have only one competent, effective capable medical doctor in the capital of that stage and anybody that has any sickness anybody that has any complaint there are no nurses there are no doctors in all the towns except one location in that state that's where we have that effective capable effa and um, e efficient medical doctor and every time we're directing them there go to so-and-so go to so-and-so that's the only hospital in the state that's the only medical doctor in the state what will happen there will be many sick people unattended to Let's make the situation worse a little bit. What if in the whole country, in this Nigeria, we have only one efficient, capable medical doctor? And he resides in Lagos. And uh, he has uh, an hospital. And he has some um, people around him to write the card so that he can see those people that have complained. If you have any problem in Maiduguri, you have any problem in Kano, you have any problem in Jos, you have any problem in Portacot, you have any problem from Enugu, any problem in Imo State, any problem in uh, Ondo, any problem in uh, Ibadan, you just direct that patient to the single medical doctor we have in the whole of Nigeria. What will happen? What will happen? The people will not be attended to. Many people will not be healed. Do you know that's the situation the Christian people are happy to have? They're happy to have just one person in the whole stage, maybe the state overseer, that can operate in the gifts of the Spirit. 
that can lay hands on the sick, that can make them to recover. And uh, the believers are happy and satisfied. And in any case, there is, they are willing to direct that person to the one single person or two people in the whole state. Go to them. I just have a teaching ministry. I can, you know, just pray my little prayer in my corner here. Go to so and so. That's why we're not going to be able to help many people if it remains like that. As it is in the natural world, even in this Lagos alone, uh, the medical doctors in Lagos, they are more than the coordinators that we have in the church. And as you think about every city in Lagos State, we have hospital, there, hospital, there, hospital, there, there are capable doctors that are there. As you think about every state in Nigeria, there is no state in Nigeria where we don't have doctors and hospitals. Don't you think that if those doctors are multiplied in their thousands, don't you know that we need thousands of people that have the gifts of the Spirit in their lives so that they'll be able to heal the sick in any corner of this country and it will happen like that in Jesus' name. Now, we're here from all of Africa. What if uh, all the problems uh, we have in Togo, we have in Bene, we have in Burkina Faso, we have in Ivory Coast, we have in Niger Republic, we have in Mali, we have in South Africa, uh, we have in Tanzania, we have in Kenya, and we have in Zimbabwe, we have in Malawi, we have in uh, Botswana. All the medical problems that uh, we have in all these various countries, in all those countries, let's say they don't have a uh, any medical doctor there and they send all their patients to Nigeria what chaos don't you understand spiritual implication of that we are not going to just say well uh, the power of God is flowing in Lagos the power of God is there in Nigeria we need this power of God in every country in this continent and therefore you understand we are not just to be leaning upon uh, the few people that have got the power of God now we need the power of God in every one of you present here and uh, you sisters see what happens in the natural world in the natural world we have specialist doctors among men do we have specialists among women do we have yes yeah, there are some women that are even more capable in uh, the medical profession than men doesn't that tell you something spiritually that even those of us who are women because it is the gift of the spirit and it says in the last days i'll pour my spirit upon all flesh and it says your sons and uh, daughters therefore for the women as well it is available for you and by the grace of god we're going to get into the power of god and we will be operating in the power of god in jesus name let me assume now that by the grace of god since it is gift it is not something you earn it is not your tears that will make the gift to be in your life it is not anything it is a gift of god and the gift is available for you it's available for me i'm going to assume that tonight as i pray with you if you have not got the power yet you must get that power yeah. and if you have got the power already i'm believing that it will multiply in jesus name yeah. don't you see that moses had that power and then moses cried out to god and he said oh that all the people of God were prophets and the spirit of God will abide upon them and then God eventually said call at least those 70 and then he called them 60 of them were in the tabernacle and two of them were still in uh, their camp in our own language now in the hostel and as the Lord came down and took of the spirit on uh, on Moses he put it upon the 70 and then they began to prophesy they began to proclaim the truth of God it will happen like that yeah. don't you also know that Elijah told Elisha he said ask what was the next word what you know Bible you are preachers now tell me ask what if you are clever, you just open that passage and, you know, while I'm still saying, ask what, ask what, then you read it out. If you are clever, that's what to do. All right, uh, let's all be clever now and uh, let us look at it. In 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, 2 Kings chapter 2, 
verse uh, 9. Ask what? What's the next word? Now, you see, we run over that, and that's why we miss it. We think that God only could give it to Elisha. But Elijah said, I want to give you something. What do you want? Ask what I shall give you before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha didn't say, I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask God. God will give me. Elisha understood that it is possible to transfer that power, impart that power, communicate that power. He said, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now, before you ask for a double portion, be ready for double responsibility. If you are willing to climb the mountain, go to the valley, take aeroplane, take vehicle, ride bicycle, ride motorcycle, get everywhere and preach, and have double responsibility, then you need the double portion of the Spirit. And it will come to you in Jesus' name. And then Elijah said that if you see me, very simple condition, when I'm taken away from you, it shall be so. And so it is possible to impart it's possible to pray, and then you can have, and you will have. Yeah. Let's say now we have finished prayer. We are not finished, but let's say we are finished, and you have received already. What are you going to do to be manifesting? I'll start from the point of your asking to receive to the point of exercising. It will be very short, but it's, I'm going to be very fast, and if you are writing, you need to write fast. A ask in faith without wavering b believe the promise and receive you just say uh, believe and it is yours as you believe c confess and possess because you are going to possess as much as you confess if you confess i'm receiving the power of god i have the power of god the gift of the spirit is upon me the Lord has chosen me. I am preaching the word and he is going to confirm my preaching with signs following. What you confess is what you are going to possess. D. Demonstrate God's power as he grants you opportunity. Make sure that you are looking for sick people. Search for the people that have the problems that you will be able to lay hands upon, that you will be able to pray for, that you need to cast out devils from and then you will see the manifestation of the power of God. He expect results when you pray. Don't say, well, I'm just getting started. I don't know whether anything will happen. Something must happen. Expect results when you pray. F, fast when necessary. If you see that the Lord has given you the power and you have been manifesting the power, but the time comes to your life that some problems that God has been helping you to deal with in the past, it appears now you cannot deal with them anymore. Maybe it's a call to wait upon the Lord and to fast when necessary. G, give what you have and expect God to multiply the five loaves. I could have shared testimonies with you. We don't have time. Many times you want to pray for the sick. You don't think you have much. You think it's just a little. Five loaves that would only be able to touch and help only one person. But then give it out in the hands of Jesus. And it will multiply it. And hundreds and thousands can be fed, can be touched, can be healed. Uh, with that little thing you are offering to the Lord. Each humble yourself before the Lord after each ministration you will see blind eyes open you'll see the deaf receiving their hearing you'll see creepers rising up and walking you will see miracles that you never dreamt could happen through your ministry I believe from now on you will see them but humble yourself before the Lord after each ministration I increase your faith daily by prayer and reading because faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of god g sorry j judge yourself 
for the slightest pride or carnal tendency. The Lord has started using you in a miracle ministry. And if you see that the slightest pride is about to come in, or any carnal tendency is about to come in, immediately judge yourself. That's how you retain that power of God upon your life. K, keep the unction at all costs by avoiding anything that dissipates spiritual energy. Watch your life. And you will see, you will notice that in your life, there are some peculiar, peculiar things that may not affect other people, but they may dissipate your own spiritual energy. You must make sure that you keep that unction uh, upon you at all costs, avoiding whatever will dissipate spiritual energy. L, lean on the Lord, not on your feelings. You are praying for the sick. You want to cast out devils. And uh, you may be feeling as if you are not spiritual enough. Don't depend on that feeling. You may be feeling as if you are dry. Lean upon the Lord and not on your feelings. M, move as the Spirit leads. And directs. Always keeping within the limits of scripture. The Lord may give you various methods to use. So move as the Spirit is leading and directing. But please, while you are moving in the way the Spirit is leading and directing, keep to the limits of scripture. And nurture your faith by the word that it may grow. Nurture that thing. And uh, you see that all the gifts of the Spirit, pay attention now, a particular one is pronounced in your life. Or particular two are pronounced in your life. It may be that God, God may want to make use of all the nine gifts or even more in your life, but he wants uh, some concentration on those two or those three because he wants to make use of your ministry in that way to help many people nurture your faith in that area by the word of god that that thing that the lord is imparting into you may grow oh obey the lord implicitly in all things you see when god begins to use a man or a woman in the miracle ministry uh, you need to be, be very close to god and uh, one of the ways you can be very close to God is to obey the Lord implicitly, implicitly. Even in the things that other people may say it doesn't matter. You know that you are a special kind of treasure in the hand of the Lord. A special vessel in the hand of the Lord. Obey the Lord implicitly. P. Pray persistently and never yield to discouragement. You have uh, prayed for somebody and there was a partial solution and a total solution has not come pray again after all they brought a man to the lord jesus and he touched him and he said how do you see he said i see men as trees walking he touched him again and then he now said i see very clearly so then you ought to pray persistently you have prayed before and a problem has not totally yielded, has not totally been solved. Be persistent in your prayer. Or remember that healings are not always instantaneous. Sometimes they are gradual. And therefore, if God has started the work, encourage the person. It may be that when you pray, all you see is clouds of the size of a man's hand. And it doesn't cover the whole local government. It doesn't cover the whole tribe. It doesn't cover the whole nation. Take that little thing and understand it will expand. It will grow until there will be abundant rain on the whole nation. Remember that healing sometimes may be gradual instead of instantaneous. S. Share your failures with the Lord. Don't let the failures crush you. Don't let the failures disturb you so much that you will not try again. Share the failures of the Lord, but don't be hurt by them. Don't say, I tried before, I will never try again. Share them with the Lord. You may not be given all the reasons why you failed in that case. You have been walking on the water. Now you see the storm and you see the wind boisterous and you are sinking. Don't keep quiet. Shout out, save me, Lord, and the Lord will deliver you. T trust and never doubt trust and never doubt you unite your faith with the lord's faith 
And if you unite your face with the Lord's face, what that means is that any time you are praying for the sick, have the consciousness that the Lord is by your side. He is in you and you are in him. And you are preaching not by your faith. You are preaching by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and he gave himself for you. You are not alone in that ministry. And then we verify the testimonies before they are given and beware of exaggerations. If you exaggerate, the Lord will take it to mean that you are seeking glory for yourself. Therefore, verify those testimonies uh, before they are given and beware of exaggerations. Double your wage on the Lord very often. Very often. Don't allow the many crusades and the many opportunities of preaching and the many opportunities of counseling make you go dry. Uh, make sure that very often you are waiting upon the Lord so that you remain strong and invincible. Ex exercise authority and dominion over demons without hesitation don't allow fear to make you recoil or to hesitate when you're on the battlefield it's too late to turn back make sure that you just stand your ground there and exercise that authority and dominion why yield fully to the lord in all things z zero in on the positive never on the negative don't use the word impossible or difficult incredible unbelievable i don't think this can be done remove all those things from your language and zero in on the positive never thinking on the negative now i'm going to close with uh, two verses of scripture and these two verses of scripture they have the word possible in uh, Matthew chapter 19, Matthew chapter 19, and in verse 26, Matthew 19, verse 26, with men this is impossible, but with God, tell me out loud, all things are possible think about those words all things are possible while you are thinking about those words that with god all things are possible now turn to mark chapter 9 and in verse 23 and jesus said unto him if thou canst believe what are the next words all things are possible to him that believeth here is god all things are possible for him and when you are in God, you are in Christ in God. And you believe in the Lord. The same all things are possible with God because it is God that works in you. And that works with you. And that says these sons shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. In my name if they take up, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will take up serpents. And if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. That same God is saying, all things are possible with me. As you abide in the Lord, you'll find also that whatever situation may confront you, all things are possible with you too. Do you believe that? Now link up with the Lord and know that as all things are possible with him, while you are abiding in the Lord and believing in the Lord, through you also all things are possible. Blind eyes can open. The lame can walk. Demons can be cast out. Impossibilities will become possible as you pray for them. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord. Believe the Lord, the promises unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Believe that from this very month, if you have not been healing the sick before, you'll begin to heal the sick. You'll begin to cast out devils. 
the signs will begin to follow your ministration and your ministry. Brother, it is so. Believe the Lord. Sister, it is so. Believe the Lord. Moses imparted it unto Joshua. Elijah imparted it unto Elisha. Jesus gave the authority to his disciples. He said, I give unto you power. He didn't touch them. He didn't have to even lay hands on them. But he gave them the authority. And as he gave them the authority, they received it. And they went out and they healed the sick and they cast out devils and they cleansed the lepers and they raised the dead. Freely they received and freely they gave. Don't depend upon your feeling. It is by faith, not by feeling. We need the power. We cannot afford to only have to have only one man in the state, only one man in the region that can heal the sick, that can cast out devils. We need more than one in the local government. We need the brothers, we need the sisters. God needs every one of us. There are too many suffering people. There are too many people having difficulty. There are too many sick people. There are too many demonized people. There are too many problems in many lives. Only one man is not enough. Only one woman is not enough. Only the state overseer is not enough. Only the region overseer is not enough. All of us, all of us, in the natural world, the number of medical doctors in this nation, they are more than the number of those of us who are here tonight. If the worldly people are training many doctors, many doctors, more doctors, the church needs more people or the power of God upon their lives, or the gifts of the Spirit in their ministry. God needs you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's bow the eyes closed. As we are going to pray now, you will receive as much as you believe you are going to receive. And uh, there is no born evangelist. There is no born miracle worker. And there is no special person. The Lord loves all his children. I've told you before. I was the most unlikely person to pray for the sick. Originally, I wasn't even interested. All I was interested in was to just teach the word of God. And I knew that God could use me to teach, and I just concentrated on that. And I wasn't interested in any other thing. But then I saw that people were suffering. And then I prayed. And after the prayer, I didn't immediately that same day, even that same week, see anything. 
and I didn't feel heavier or taller or warmer or anything. It wasn't feeling. But I was in the meeting one day and I opened my mouth and I found myself saying something I didn't think of before. And it was that that convinced me that God had given the signs and the wonders. God has many ways of dealing with different people. He will deal with you in a way you can understand. But what I know is that the power of God is coming upon your life tonight. And the manifestation may start in your family. Husband praying for the wife. A child praying for the parents. I had a testimony very recently. It moved me and touched me to the very depth of my heart. A mother had just one child. And come, she comes to deeper life. That one child, I think about six or seven years of age, also comes to deeper life. And the in-laws were making trouble with that woman, saying that you are a woman of only one child, we're going to drive you out. And the woman was crying. And the child was by that mother. And this six, seven-year-old child said, Mother, why are you crying? Don't you have Jesus? Don't you believe that God works miracle? And this child said, Mother, I'm going to pray for you. And uh, the mother was still crying and sorrowful. And this, this child, little child, lay hands on that mother and said, God, you know that I'm your child. I don't have familiar spirit. I'm not a witch. I want another brother. And I pray now for my mother in Jesus' name that my mother will have another baby before next December. That's before 1995 December. And the child said, in Jesus' name. And the mother was still sorrowful and didn't uh, say amen. So the child said, Mama, say amen. And so the mother said, Amen. To cut a long story short, this last December, that mother gave testimony the child was born. And the promise is unto you and to your children. This power of God will come upon your life. The anointing will come upon your life. Ex bowed and eyes closed. That person that is having the trouble in your head, raise up your hand. I'm looking for you and touch that head. I'll be praying for you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking that that affliction and that uh, sin in the head, I'm praying that sin should be taken away in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name, I pray. I'm asking for the person that has the pulse coming out of the wound in your body. And that wound that's refused to be healed, but the pulse is coming out. And I'm asking for the person that is having that uh, terrible thing coming out in your ears also. Just raise up your hand and lay your hand in that place, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking right now that that wound, internal bleeding, uh, will stop in Jesus' name. And I pray that that ear that is having that problem with that thing oozing out, I pray that your mighty healing hand will come upon that place, heal that person now in Jesus' name. The fellow that is always having constipation, you have not eaten anything, and it appears that uh, you have overeaten and you have not taken anything. And uh, the, the air or whatever it is, is all is that in your belly. And everything is very hard and very big. If you touch that place now, that thing of the devil is going to be taken away. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking right now that that thing in the belly, that constipation, you remove it in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. 
the person on the on the diagonal here on my left hand side that has been having that epileptic fit, you'll fall down, you'll get up again. They say it's convulsion. They say it's something. I'm asking you to raise up your hand and lay your hand upon yourself, you demon of epilepsy. I command you, you have no right to be there. And I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that that person will not that feet anymore, but that person will be made whole, totally delivered in Jesus' name. The person in the, uh, you are in hall too, far away over there, and the noise is there, wants to scatter your brain, wants to confuse your life. And sometimes you even want to rise up as if you should run, and there is nothing chasing, it's a spiritual force, it's an attack in hall two over there. If you raise up your hand, you are free right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking right now that you'll deliver this person in Jesus' name that attack and that affliction I come against you now and I command be totally free in Jesus name the person in the, this hall is one two three hall three that uh, you are having that uh, pain in the lower part of the abdomen and the thing is swollen on your press and I see you using uh, something and then you are rubbing and you are putting hot water I, I pray that thing will stop right now and I command that the mighty power of God will come upon your life and that infirmity in your life be removed in Jesus name see that person over there that has the problem in the neck and the stiffness in the neck the pain in the neck and it appears since you had uh, that problem uh, the neck had been stiff and you're very careful you cannot run because it will shake that head or that neck in the wrong direction lay your hands there now in the name of jesus i pray oh lord that you take that infirmity and stiffness and pain away from that neck in jesus name that person that has something like a boil and it appears the boil will not go. It's just getting bigger and bigger and the thing you are wondering, uh, they want to excise it now and they want to test whether it is another thing that I don't want to mention. The Lord is touching you right now. I pray that the Lord will take all that infirmity and boil away from you now in Jesus name. The person there that has a skin disease and you have been trying to treat it and uh, the thing will not go. I pray that the blood of Jesus will cleanse you. And I pray that the power of God will come upon you. And all that disease will get away from you in Jesus' name. The chest pain over there and the ulcer over here, I take authority over them right now. And I command that that pain in the chest and that uh, pain in the uh, upper part of the abdomen be removed in Jesus' name. See this person that is coughing and you are coughing up blood. And you are afraid as if you are going to die. You are thinking maybe it is tuberculosis or this. I pray that right now the Lord will touch you. And the Lord will manifest his power. Be healed in Jesus name. The person over here that is having that kidney problem. I pray that the Lord will touch your kidney right now. And life and vitality and power will come into those kidneys. Be healed in Jesus name. You are there's a person there that has the problem urinating and I'm praying right now that that pain you feel when you go to the toilet and that a terrible thing that seizes you and you are crying like a baby I command that instantaneously that thing will stop now in Jesus name the person that is, is, is like uh, you are eating, the person I'm talking about, and you have this uh, thing in your neck, it's like something is sticking there in the neck, as if it's a piece of bone or something. Every time you swallow, you are feeling that pain. And I command right, right now that the mighty power of God will remove that object there, that predicament there, and that painful thing there, be healed in Jesus' name. Any weakness in anyone here? any infirmity in anyone here your eyesight your eardrum your throat and your belly and every part of your body the paralysis and the stroke i command right now be removed in jesus name oh lord i am asking that your mighty gentle hand invisible but supernatural will touch everyone here every brother here every sister here every boy and every girl here i pray that they receive the miracle in jesus name oh lord i'm asking for this person that had this uh, recent dream it's like uh, they put you in a coffin and they were going to bury you they were just about to bury you and then you woke up and since that time fear of death has been chasing you about pursuing you in your life, 
I cancel the spirit of fear. You spirit of fear, you know that I have authority over you. That when I stand and I declare the name of the Lord, I decree a thing that is established unto me. I command you, leave that person's life in Jesus' name. And that spirit of death, I cancel you and remove you in Jesus' name. Be healed and be delivered right now in Jesus' name. Now, O oh Lord, you've shown us today that this power will multiply. And that the brothers and the sisters who are here, O oh Lord, you know that apart from grace, apart from your goodness, I'm not better, I'm not greater or higher than my brothers and sisters here. Apart from title, position, that they call somebody this title, they call another person that title, Lord, you know that everything I do is by your grace. And since it's by your grace, it's available to every brother. It's available to every sister. And therefore, as your people raise up their hands now, and they touch themselves with the other hand, like you transferred the power in a very tangible way from Moses unto those elders, like the double portion came upon Elisha, from Elijah and like Jesus told the disciples I give unto you power to cast out devils and to heal the sick and you send them forth in your mighty power I pray O Lord in a very tangible way in a very definite way in a transforming manner I pray that the power the unction the anointing will be transferred and imparted into the lives of all these people in Jesus name I pray, Lord, that fear that will not launch out into the deep, that fear that will not rise and begin to do the works of God, that fear that will not pray for the sick, that fear that will think if I pray, nothing will happen. Remove that fear from everyone in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I pray that this very month will begin to hear of spectacular manifestations and doings of the Lord that all these brothers and sisters they will heal the sick not ordinary sickness incurable sickness what they used to transfer to Lagos here what they used to tell the people go and see the GS the cancer the tuberculosis the diabetes Terrible, terrible sicknesses. These brothers and sisters, they will pray. The people will be healed in Jesus' name. I pray that long-standing years of barrenness will depart as these brothers and sisters will pray for them in Jesus' name. I pray that the mighty power of God, like a deep, deep river, will flow in their lives and will flow from them to others around them in jesus name oh lord i am asking that immediately now you will touch them you will make them the carriers of your power you'll make them to be the people that are channels of the anointing and the unction and the supernatural in jesus name they will heal the sick. They will cast out devils. Your name in their mouth will be mighty and powerful. They will cleanse the lepers. People that are poor, abjectly poor. Their, your word in their mouth will turn their poverty into prosperity. And for these ministers who come from very difficult areas, demon-infested areas, oh Lord, I pray, as they go back to their local governments and regions and states and nations, as they step into that location with your power, I pray that evil spirits and evil powers will tremble before them in Jesus' name. I am praying, oh Lord, Anywhere they stand, no evil man with evil power will be able to stand before them. Send your angels around them to guard them and to protect them. That it will begin to happen that anyone that wants to harm them 
While they are still coming kilometers away, the Spirit of God will seize them. I will make them to be confessing openly and publicly in Jesus' name. I pray they will raise the dead. Literally, literally dead people that died prematurely as they go forth in your power. Oh Lord, they will raise the dead in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray no poison will do them harm. Poison food, poison water, any enemy that is trying to play any trick on them. I pray that spiritual supernatural immunity from every kind of poison you grant unto them that the blood of Jesus will just be cleansing everything away as it's coming in. I pray for that woman there that has uh, been having problem with the pregnancy. And it appears that uh, you are thinking and you are dreaming that you are going to go with that pregnancy. I reject that thing. You will remain alive. That child will remain alive. Be made whole in Jesus' name. I'm asking for that woman there that you'll be married and there is no child. And I didn't think I was coming back to personal administration again. But the Lord is uh, directing the word at you that this is 1996. This year you will carry your own baby. And everything that has been stopping that pregnancy, it is removed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that every one of your children here, your power that is now on them, your anointing that is now on them, as they move out, out of this uh, Congress, I pray that they will see the manifestation of the power of God upon their lives in Jesus' name. We know you have answered. We will see the manifestation. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to praise the Lord and know that the Lord has touched you. The Lord has blessed you.